one of the projects that took a long time to make was the Entavager project. And it took two years. About two months per image, we did 11 images. And it was the first time that Roy and I had an experience together where we were going to enter a project knowing that we were going to have difficulties technically and there would be a trial and error period and he might have to alter his original maquettes to accommodate our technical problems. Now what were our technical problems? We were trying to deboss and emboss material, both foil and paper at the same time in a press, a hydraulic press, using assembled plates that were basically made up of elements of embossed material such as the bronze casting that we had here to make this bronze texture, to fluted machine pieces that produce these flutes, to <clears throat> curved pieces that made these wonderful curved debossed areas. And in the process of making these prints, we found out that if we had too many things going on uh, in close proximity, the paper would fracture or we would be incapable of registering it so that we would have everything in perfect registration and we would not get any rejects. And in this kind of printing, there is no room for error. It's either on or it's not. And when you're registering different kinds of elements together, paper shrinks, goes in and out during the daytime with humidity, uh, different printers handle differently so it, it can get, you could kink the foil if you weren't careful. So we had to devise carrying trays for each one of these prints. And you take the embossment uh, out of the hydraulic press, put it on a, a blotter, and then hand carry it to a silkscreen rack because you couldn't stack these on top of each other. Each and every one of the prints presented another problem for us. Uh, when it came to just embossing one flat sheet of foil, we thought that was simple and we would have no problems at all. And we wound up noticing that we were getting a puckered edge because the foil and the paper had to go somewhere. And when they were being munched together, mind you, these things, these pieces of paper were subjugated to about 150 tons of pressure. That was the pressure required to push the paper into the deboss mode or the emboss mode and also to adhere the foil. When we started to do this print, we Roy wanted the foil to come through, but then he wanted the rest of it to be matte. So now to silkscreen a transparent matte color, with this is transparent white, on top of foil in silkscreen leaves too much of a deposit. And it, it doesn't look very good. So then we had to go to the offset press and put this print through the offset printing process to get this wonderful matte thing. We could accomplish many of the things in the later prints that we couldn't in the, in the first prints because we had learned from the previous ones. When this project was completed, I had the idea that we would frame each and every one in a nice white enamel frame with UV plexiglass, acid-free rag board behind it, and I had a nice white box made. So each one of these things were packaged beautifully. So I very proudly was showing off the demo demonstrating the box technique to Roy. Uh, so we had two or three different pieces already boxed in the curating room. And he looked at me and he said, what's a shelf life? 